I think we've landed on the moon. <laughs> wow, look at that. Beautiful. Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm headed out to a little lost village, a place called Glenbuck. It's not far from where I live actually, it only takes about 20 minutes to get there, maybe even less. But uh, I'm hoping when I get there I'm able to get off road a little bit. But not only that, Glenbuck is a fascinating little village. Some really interesting people came from there. I've been cutting the grass. <laughs> Tractors attacking me with hedge clippings. <laughs> so today I had my first cold start issue, I guess you would call it, with this bike. That's the first time ever uh, where it's, it's struggled to, to kick over a little bit. It started. It started without having to jump start it or, or, or bump it or anything. So, you know guys, I'm out filming all the time now, so often that means stop start stop start a good little short journey just stop turn the engine off that's certainly not helping this battery you know <laughs> oh wow so maybe we're not going to glenbuck because that's the road i need to take yeah we're all right folks i think that was just a tiny little part of that road that's been closed off because there's other vehicles coming up this way so we're good we're all good <laughs> I was kind of frantically thinking, oh no, where can I go now? <laughs> From here. Oh. oh well, it's all good. There's always plenty of places to go. Don't get me wrong, there's always a million places to go. So but It's a bit odd if you tell people at the beginning of a video you're going to go to a certain place, then you end up somewhere else. But that's all part of the adventure, I suppose. <laughs> So the place we're headed is just to the left of these hills in front of us, where these windmills are. It's at the east end of East Ayrshire. So when we get past that hill that you can see in front of us, that's you into Lanarkshire. But Glenbuck is just on the border between Ayrshire and Lanarkshire. Glenbuck. Now there's a little loch right here, a reservoir. Look at that. Glorious, eh? Lovely. Don't swim there. Fast flowing water. <laughs> and I'm not allowed to park here either. The little road boat, little fishing boat over there. So people obviously fishing in that little reservoir. Very cool. So, Glenbuck is a heritage village. If you look at the topography here, look at this. That'll have been mine works at some point. Now you get that all over Ayrshire, all over Scotland actually. And this here, I think that used to be an iron smelt. Let's have a look. Iron works, that's exactly it. So you've been mining for iron and coal in this area. Anyway, that's not why I'm here. Now then. Wow, look at this. Where are we going? Where are we going? Left or right? So, I've just came in through the village of Glenbuck here folks and I thought I'd come up the hill. Yeah. All of this, more recently, has been used for open cast mining. But the community here goes all the way back to the Bronze Age. That's right. <laughs> the Bronze Age. Yeah. But, the village itself and this whole area is completely abandoned now. There's the odd farm and stuff dotted around, but no longer here. What a beautiful night. That sun's going down behind me. What a great little place to come off-road. I kind of figured I would be able to come up here. Nah, it's not proper off-road, not yet. I might be able to find something, but... Just a little gravel path. <laughs> Let's take this one to the left. See if that takes us up towards the little wind farm up the hill. I think it must do. Oh, this. That bit. More gnarly. Let's stand up. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> bumpy bumpy awesome great night for it as well great night for it, I've only maybe got about 20 minutes of sunshine left so I can play about for another 10 minutes down to the village before the sun sets <laughs> whoa we're sliming around this is quite dusty here it's wet, when it's dry, oh, nearly fell over when it's dry this will be quite compact but once it gets wet you find yourself sort of sliding around on it it's not difficult terrain by any means it's quite interesting change of scenery for me and then there we go I think we've landed on the moon <laughs> wow look at that beautiful oh, I wish I'd brought the drone and get up this hill have Himalayan will travel I don't want to get my feet wet because I don't have the proper boots on tonight there we go it's getting a little bit gnarlier now wow look at this glorious now why why oh why didn't I bring the drone out here never mind let's ride the Himalayan yeah beautiful wow I wonder if this takes me back down the hill again I think I might have found a new um, a new playground folks wow I'll take them up here in the snow whoop bump there seems to be some sort of standing stones or something over here now as I say this there was a bronze age settlement here I've not read anything about these stones but I would not be surprised if those standing stones are, are not ancient wow am I glad I came out here tonight <laughs> now why would you have a Himalayan and not do this that's my question I know it's maybe not possible for everybody but let's have a look at these standing stones Oh, there's so many paths around here, it is amazing! <laughs> it's amazing! You had answer! I've officially found a new place to run around on my bike. Now, are these standing stones or are they just big rocks? Ah! Wow! You can actually see the rocks are red. You can almost see that sort of iron ore and the rock. Wow. Where does that go? Do I want to go down the hill? Or do I want to go that way? There's so many paths to take. Let's go over here and look at these. Unbelievable. Now no one's going to tell me that these rocks are natural there is no way <laughs> where am I? that's a good question <laughs> so below me here is what would have been the village of Glenbuck but it would have been dotted all around these hillsides I'm talking about a population of around 2,000 people at one point now if you see the little loch there little tiny loch just to that side of it is uh, what would have been the home the birthplace of Bill Shankly and his um, his nine siblings yeah there was five brothers five daughters but anyway the sun's going down so before it gets fully dark let's go down and talk about Glen Buck and in particular Bill Shankly the original traditional mines would have been taken over by these open casts you know but even they have been abandoned now 
Yeah, coal, coal used to be a big deal, and I say a big deal in Scotland, but not anymore. Mineral rich. Yeah, I could do worse than go um, off road in Scotland, you know. Look at this place. I found a new playground. <laughs> Let's open this gate. <laughs> I think the bike needs a wash. <laughs> what do you think? So this gives us some idea of what this might have looked like back in the day. So in the old Kirk here, you had the, the, the village and the school. Now if we look across the way here, that's essentially what you're looking at there. Yeah, that's what the village would have looked like across those hills there. It was also on this side of the road as well. Folks, this is the this is the main reason I'm here. This is a memorial to a team called the Glenbuck Cherry Pickers. They were a football team. On this lower ground here behind me, the village was on the hills all around here, even where I'm standing. But right here was the football pitch. So everybody would have had a great view looking down watching the football, almost like standing in the terraces. Why am I out here in this tiny little village in the middle of nowhere or what used to be a village talking about football? Who cares? Well, 50 of the men, 5-0 men from this tiny little community went on to play for senior football teams from here to play at senior football throughout Scotland and in England, yeah? And of those 50, seven of them became Scottish internationalists. Yeah, but there's more, okay? Somebody incredibly famous came from this little village. Let's talk about him. I'm headed to a place in the village that was known as Monkey Row. And this here in particular, I don't know if you can see that, that's where I'm headed. So this here was the home of the Shankly family. So the family ended up having two cottages here. And the reason they ended up with two cottages is because they had 10 children, yeah? So there was five brothers and five daughters. Bill Shankly came to Liverpool in, I think it was 1959 actually. Um, and he can only quite rightly be described as the father of the modern uh, Liverpool team. Yeah, His achievements were unbelievable. He brought the red shirt, <laughs> he brought the red shirt to Liverpool. Bill Shankly is renowned for being one of the most famous, one of the most successful football managers in the 20th century. I think I was the best manager in the game and I should have won more. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's fair to say that even to this day he's worshipped in the city of Liverpool. Yeah. And full disclosure, I'm not a Liverpool fan. But there's something about this I find quite mind-blowing. I find this incredibly touching. I really do, honestly. Bill Shankly's been dead for 40 years now. All of these scarves and these shirts and stuff, they're virtually brand new, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're virtually brand new. The people are still coming here on the regular. I sat here and I asked myself the question, how is it possible that this tiny little mining community, yeah, of 700 at the time Bill Shankly was born. How is it possible that they produced so many, not good football players, fantastic <laughs> football players, players that were second to none almost, they were at the top of their game for every single team that they played. So I'll have a quick look at this plaque here, these are the five brothers with mum and dad here at the front. Uh, on the far right hand side you've got Alec, he played for A United and Clyde. Moving over, You've got um, James, he played for Portsmouth, Sheffield United, Carlisle, Southend and Barrow. If we go all the way over to the left, you've got John, he played for Portsmouth, Blackpool and Alloa. Then right in the middle here, the big tall fella, you've got um, Bob, he played for Alloa, Tunbridge Wells, Falkirk and Scotland, so he was an internationalist as well. But he was also a very famous manager. He almost took Dundee. <laughs> to the European finals before any other team 
in, in, in Britain. He was un unlucky. Anyway, then second from left here, you've got Bill Shankly. He's the most famous of all the brothers. And probably about a hundred yards from the front door here. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer. Just directly across the road. Yeah, you can see the outline of it. This was the football pitch. <laughs> So these lads could quite literally, Bill and his brothers and all these lads who played for the Jerry Pickers want to play for all these international teams and stuff. They could come out here, walk straight across the road and start playing football on any given Sunday. So what drove these young men, all these young men who were miners digging in the dirt every day, the coal mines, what drove them? Thing that if a man needs a, who's, who's playing in front of the public, is being well paid and he doesn't dedicate himself to the job, I wouldn't, I would, I'd be hard on him, I'd, I would, if I could do I'd put him in jail. I think it's the environment, to be honest. Maybe they were looking for something better, football was their release, you know. Because Bill Shankly famously said that uh, Glen Buck was so harsh, especially in the winter, that it was like outer Mongolia on a cold day, <laughs> you know. And to be honest, coming from this area, it's hard to disagree, you know, on the road. My father was born in a village called Darn Corner. They would have had a football team as well, you know. But they were never as successful as the Glenbuck Cherry Pickers. But the people who came from that community all moved to a little village called Ockin Lake, which is where I was born, it's where I was raised and where I grew up. If you know anything, it's only a few miles down the road from here. But if you know anything about Scottish junior football, Walking Lake Talbot are the Barcelona of the junior leagues, there's absolutely no doubt about it. There's not another team in Scotland like them. But I wonder if they would have been successful, or as successful, if the Glen Buck Cherry Pickers were still around. That's it for this one guys, I really hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, maybe even smash that notification bell so you know the next time I upload a video to YouTube. If you want to see another install or another vlog or tips and trip tricks, have a look at one of these here. I'll see you in the next one.